in sight. Well, we're joined by a, a fantastic panel. Peter Schiff, the president of Euro-Pacific Capital. Lakshman Achutan is the managing editor of the uh, Economic Cycle Research Institute. And Jim Ellis is the assistant managing editor of Business Week. Thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, I want to start with you, Peter. Uh, you have been writing about and, and describing a, a coming crash and recession for some years now. Uh, I hate to say that some of the things that you've written about, as outlandish as they seem, do seem to be bearing out right now. Sure. You know, the problem, too, is a lot of the jobs that are now being destroyed in our economy never should have been created in the first place. They were a function of our bubble economy, of the fact that Americans were borrowing money and spending too much. And as they can no longer spend because we're broke, all these phony service sector jobs are going to have to disappear. And as painful as it is for the people who are in those jobs, the government has to stand aside and let it happen. We can't try to keep people in non-viable jobs. We need to go back to making things, and it's going to be a very painful process. And Americans are going to have to rein in their spending and start saving money. I just want to ask you one thing, and I, I know this is theory that you've worked on, but we're now talking about officially close to two million jobs lost this year alone, and it could be substantially more. I've heard you say it will need millions of, uh, of, of job losses to set this economy straight. What is the real equation there for people? What does your science and your academia tell you that real people well, are supposed it, to do? Five million people are unemployed. Look, it's not my science. It's just how markets work. It's, it's capital. Yeah, but don't we have an obligation as a nation, as a, as a, as a modern economy, to, to make well, sure that five million people aren't living well, in There's tents. nothing that we can do. You know, the government can't create jobs. They're going to destroy jobs, jobs trying to do it. The government doesn't have any money. All they have is a printing press. We need the free market to create jobs. If the government wants to help, they should reduce their burden on the economy. We should be cutting government spending. We should be cutting taxes. We actually should be raising interest rates. We're doing all of the well, wrong things. Listen, and we're going to destroy this economy. Nobody is talking about doing any of those things. You're um, right. I mean, and, and, nobody's, and so what they're talking right. about doing is spending a whole lot of money yeah. in, in fiscal stimulus. And we've got the Federal Reserve doing everything that it possibly can but, to keep the economy afloat. But focus. they're not going to keep it going. Remember, we're in trouble because we borrowed and spent too much money. We're not going to borrow and spend our way out of it. We have to do the opposite of what we've been doing. We are simply digging ourselves into a deeper hole right now. Lakshman, right. we're we're not doing what, what Peter says right. we should be doing, and no one says we're going to do that. Right. What are we doing, and will it work? Well, the one thing we're doing is we're probably cutting taxes, which, which is, I think, one of the things you were prescribing. But uh, what we are doing here is they're throwing uh, an, an ungodly amount of money uh, at, at the economy. Uh, not only the U.S., all of the major economies in the world are doing this. Even China is doing it in a and coordinated way. And you're a proponent way. of the idea that that will ultimately work. Well, look, ultim what this is going to do is it's going to mitigate to a degree, the pain on the way down. We are in a severe recession. As you were pointing out, this economy went from a mild recession to a very, very severe recession. The numbers today, they don't tell you anything about the future. They just tell you that a few weeks ago, we really accelerated to the downside. Now, when you look at the forward-looking indicators on the business cycle, they don't look years ahead, they look quarters ahead. They are tanking. They are at the worst readings yeah. they've been at in 60 years. So we've got more numbers like we saw today, or on Friday, uh, coming uh, in the months ahead. And in order, the one thing, the business cycle, the sharper the downturn, it tends to beget a sharper upturn. Uh, all of the things that we're doing here in the desperation of the moment are going to create all kinds of big questions on the other side in terms of the ideology of free markets, inflation, and other things, printing presses with the, with the currencies. But Jim Ellis says it's too soon to start worrying about that, right? I mean, we are facing the beast that we're facing right now, and then somewhere down the road there'll be a recovery and a bubble that'll have to be popped again. But what are we doing right now, and will it work? Well, right now we basically have to find ways to um, you know, free up the credit markets, get people to lend again, and as bad as uh, we ran into trouble with people b borrowing a lot and spending, we've got to get people spending again. That is uh, something that I think some people, particularly um, you know, sort of fiscal conservatives, really worry about. But that's a bubble to come. That's, th that's next year's fight or the fight after. Right now, the only thing to do is to get money coursing back through the economy. And that's going to be a real challenge for the new president, given that we're talking about doing that and, and basically accepting deficits that we haven't seen in yeah, years. Hold on, hold on, Peter. We're going to uh, have this discussion in a way uh, where our viewers can understand how they fit into it. This is a very smart discussion. You need to know where, how this affects you. Now, the big buzz this week has been about the auto industry and whether or not to give it a bailout loan that is worth billions of dollars. You'll hear what one auto CEO claims would happen. Automakers if back on the Hill this week, this time seeking $34 billion to stay afloat. As far as hearings theater goes, it wasn't bad, though. They were actually getting down to brass 
tax. I spoke with Chrysler CEO Bob Nardelli, who claimed that the fa failing of his company alone would mean the immediate mm. loss of 53,000 jobs at Chrysler, plus another 140,000 jobs gone with the closing of more than 3,300 dealerships. Add to that the loss in value of over 31 million Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge uh, cars, and you can see how staggering the numbers are. But are they actually true? That's reality, Ali. That is reality. Those are all uh, those are all auditable numbers. Those are numbers that represent some industry experts that we have retained to give us the guidance and to make sure we responded. That was a specific question that Congress asked us to respond to. What would it cost? What is the impact? And that you're reading exactly the data that we submitted. All right, let's uh, go back to the testimony. We heard, we heard testimony from an official from the GAO, the Government Accounting Office, who said, and uh, these are quotes, in this case, you know, Chrysler is owned by a private equity firm, so you don't have the normal disclosures that you do for the other two companies, end quote. Now, Americans are concerned about how public companies like Ford and General Motors are going to spend taxpayer finance loans. How do you suppose they feel about a company that is ultimately shrouded in secrecy? Well, uh, let me let me uh, let me give bring clarity to that. First of all, we submitted a 120-page document. Both the House and Congress agreed to uh, to make sure that those were uh, those were reviewed in confidentiality. But the other thing that was suggested today, and we totally support, is to provide an oversight, to provide transparency. The uh, government accounting group asked if we, if we if they could have access. They didn't have jurisdiction to demand. We openly and willingly said, "Come on in. We'll show you our numbers. We'll be happy to do a monthly report." Yeah. We do that with our investors today, Ali. So we have no problem in in providing transparency and accountability to those people if they're willing to give us the funds to allow us to fur furnish. All right. Let me ask you this: survive. Much has been made, obviously, about the jet situation and about you and the other two heads of U.S.-based automakers agreeing to take just a dollar in salary. Now, it was widely reported that you actually agreed to take an annual salary of a dollar when you were first hired to run Chrysler about a year ago. I understand you took no bonus in 2008. You won't get one in 2009. You've got no stop sh stock options or restricted stock. You don't even get health care or insurance benefits. Am I correct to assume that you have made exactly two dollars since starting at Chrysler? <laughs> well, Ali, that's right. I mean, I, I've agreed uh, because I, I am committed to this. I've agreed no salary. Uh, I don't have any health care. I don't have any life insurance. And there's nothing else other than the buck. Control. You got a dollar at the end of 2007. <laughs> there's nothing else? <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. And, and, uh, but look, my, my, my reason for being here, it, when they asked me, was to try and help Chrysler return to profitability. I, I am totally invested Alan, in making that work. All right, we're joined again by Jim Ellis, Peter Schiff, and Lachman Achutan to continue our conversation. Obviously, uh, Bob Nardelli making his case for the uh, for, for the bailout for a loan to the auto industry. Uh, Jim, let's let's start with you. Uh, what's your view on in where word, this is? In a word, yes or no? Do they get a bailout? Or no. In, in a word, yes. I mean, there's a political dimension here. I mean, we can talk about whether, from an economic standpoint, this is wise or not. But let's face it, this is a decision that's going to be made in Washington. And even though we're talking about 34 billion dollars in the in the world of what we've given away over the last couple of months, we are talking about a rounding error. And also a rounding error that has quite a lot of legislators who would like to see this happen, even though the right. public polls lately have sort of moved against it. But if you look at dealerships alone, you're talking about employment in a lot of you know, towns around this country that probably does go uh, more than a half million. So there are a lot of people...